Injury updates for us, Yeah, injury-wise, uh, you know, all these guys, for the most part, are day-to-day, -day, uh, starting with Kelvin. Uh, Cordy, uh, really no timetable on Cordy. He's the one exception at this point. Really no timetable. <clears throat> he continues to work through it, uh, having said that. So uh, Mike Tolbert, Nick O'Leary, Eddie Yarborough, and John Miller, um, all day-to-day. Uh, and uh, will not practice today. And then limited will be Jordan Matthews and Charles Clay. All right, so Sean, you, when you took this job, you, you knew um, who the standard is in this division, and now you're going to get your first crack at them. Just, if you could, share some thoughts about you know, trying to slay the beast for the first time as, a, as the Bills coach. <laughs> well, listen, I, you know, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, for what they do and what they've done. Um, you know, uh, we respect every opponent, and um, them being the world champs, defending world champs, that, I mean, what they've been able to accomplish is, is just incredible. Um, you know, we have to focus on ourselves, and we have to focus on our process and our vision for what we're trying to become as an organization and as a team, and um, that's just to continue to grow, continue to get better every week. When did you, I mean, how much of the summer <coughs> did you look? Yeah, you always look at division opponents uh, the, the best you can. Uh, first year, it's always tough because of everyone's getting, um, you know, kind of figuring out where to live, all these types of things. And you go into now building the playbook, uh, offense, defense, special teams, making sure we're right first. Uh, and then also trying to keep, to your point, an eye on division opponents. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of both in that. I mean, you mentioned at the owners' meetings, they're the reason you get up at 4 or 5 in the morning. And <laughs> how much can you, or how much have you watched Tom, and, you know, before you got here and then now, you know, trying to catch up on, on what he does? Yeah, I mean, you know, how we, I get up, we get up as coaches um, the same every week. It's, that's the Groundhog Day part of this league, just like it is for you guys every week. Um, you, you stick with your routine, and 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 so um, you know. Really, it's then you you obviously have a chance to watch uh, over the years what they've done. Um, you know, again, as, as I said earlier, um, you know, um, there's there's a lot of uh, respect for what they've done over the years, and uh, not only on the playing field, how they coach, how they do things. Um, it's you know, um, you know, I tip my hat off to them for. Tip my hat to them for what they've been able to do. John, you're 42 or 43, I think. He's 40, Tom Brady. Can you imagine yourself doing what he does? Uh, you were a great athlete. <laughs> you might as well just day, stop but... right there. <laughs> Jeez. Can you imagine him playing at 40 the way he's playing right now? Uh, it's incredible. You know, it's incredible what he's been able to do um, through, throughout his, his career. You, you know, and um, I know. Um, you know, not only what he does on the field, what he does off the field, I'm sure, in terms of what I've heard with his preparation, their entire team. Um, you know, that's, you know, there's a difference between winning and doing the things that lead you to winning. And, um, you know, it's clear that they, that they the habits that they, um, you know, do on a da daily basis, weekly basis, um, set themselves up for success. So. Considering that you're coming off a recent stretch of 45 points a game and over three games, how can you be optimistic about stopping these guys here? Well, it's a weekly approach. Um, and uh, it's really, like I said, a lot of respect for our opponent. doesn't change uh, how we approach every week. Uh, the standard that we've set for ourselves, um, you know, remains the same every week. And, you know, we focus on uh, what we do, how we can improve uh, our vision, our process, how we're building. And, um, and that's really what we focus on. There's only so many things you can control. And um, and, you, and and so that's what we focus on. Much like the much like the drought and how people want to talk about it, but yet there's guys that aren't haven't been here, and you have to kind of balance that out. And you know, it's it's not on them. You want to focus on what you're doing. It's the same thing with the Patriots. It's this week where they're going to be hammered all week with the dominance of this team over the Bills over the last whatever years. But these guys weren't here for that. How do you balance that out? That it's not you, but at the same time you have to recognize that this has been the team that has dominated the Bills for so long. Yeah, I mean there's. You know, I, I understand that that's been a part of the past, and I, and I respect 
you know, the past. Um, that said, you know, we're focused on right now and where we're going as an organization and the vision for this, for this organization, the vision for our football team, uh, our entire building. And uh, it's, it's one day at a time. It's building towards what we're trying to become. And, um, and really, you know, they've been to where we're trying to get to, and they've been there for a long time. So, um, you know, that goes without saying. Um, you know, we just have to focus on our process and continue to grow each and every day, learn from what we didn't do well yesterday, and, and, and make, help make that better, or help use that to make us better in the future and, and tomorrow and, and continue to grow. Um, you know, I'm confident in these guys. Uh, I'm confident that they'll put in the work this week just like they do every week. One of the things that the Patriots' uh, defense was not good at all. After the first couple of weeks, though, they really turned around and been one of the best in the league. And how impressive has that turnaround been? Yeah, I mean, you know, you go through, like you've heard me say before, Josh, you go through things that challenge you in a, in a duration of a season, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, or as a team. And, um, you know, they went through a little, um, you know, deal early in the year where they were, you know, had some things defensively. Um, and it, it appears they've gotten them corrected, and uh, that's what that's what coaching, that's what you're there for to to adjust and, and make uh, make your team better. So uh, for us, you know, no different. You know, we have to continue to grow, uh, continue to focus on the fundamentals, um, the techniques, continue to focus on our day-to-day -day growth and how we're learning and becoming a better, stronger football team. Which, and I'll say, you know, one of them is is our young players have played a lot, and that's a good thing. And uh, when you look at the snap counts and, and the percentage of the time that our young guys have played, that again um, is a good thing for our future in terms of where we're going, how we're building, and our vision. When it comes to picking your poison when it, uh, versus a quarterback like Tom Brady, some folks like to drop back, some folks like to pressure him. The, Dol uh, the Dolphins pressured him a lot, hit him a lot, and yet still lost 35 to 17. How do you balance your approach in, a, in, in knowing? that Tom, what, what, what Tom Brady can do? Well, there's, therein lies the, the problem, the challenge. You know, it's, you see some people pressure and, and they put up 35. You see some people stay back and they put up 35 or 40 or 50. Um, so, um, you know, there's, I don't think there's an exact formula out there um, for, uh, and that's why they've gotten to where they've gotten to over the years. How impressed are you with this <clears throat> fact that he's, held seven straight teams to 17 points or less after giving up the most points in the league for the first month? Uh, it's, you know, it's a credit to, to all the people in their building, you know, the coaches, the players. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Coach, when they, I mean, defensively, they seem to do a good job of taking away a major strength of their opponent, which I know is a goal every week. But does that affect how you guys prepare, you know, offensively in terms of having solutions in the event that they are successful in doing that? knowing they've done that successfully in the past? Yeah, you know, they, they do a good job of that. Um, and identifying strengths and trying to make uh, other teams beat them in other ways. Uh, and I think that's a big part of what they do, how they prepare, and that's, that's um, fairly clear. And, you know, that's, that's smart. It's logical. It makes a lot of sense. And, and um, so, you know, we have to make sure that's where the focus gets back on ourselves and what we do, strengthening our strengths and making sure we improve our weaknesses. And that's Again, it goes back to focus on the process, learn from the valuable mistakes we've made, and what wasn't up to our standard is get those areas up to our standard. And that's a daily, uh, weekly uh, thing in, in terms of improving what we've done. So you talk about defending Brady a little bit, but on the flip side, one of the best options is Rob Gronkowski, I guess. What's, is there a formula to best defend him and slow him down to the best of your ability? Uh, you know, just, you know, it's uh, obviously the matchups are important, and um, you know, you do you do the best you can. I don't know if anybody's ever stopped him. I don't know if anybody's ever stopped their offense. You know, it's um, you know they've got weapons, they've got matchup uh, weapons all over the board, um, and uh, and so they're a talented group. Is there a benefit going from Travis Kelsey to Rob Gronkowski just having seen back to back? Yeah, you f when you find the benefit, let me know. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Josh. I mean, and I'm not being disrespectful. I just, I mean, these are talented football players, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I know Gronk's a local uh, guy here, so um, talented uh, matchup concerns opens up the running game, um, you know, all that. Coach, uh, I think this is the week Colt Anderson might be eligible to return. 
from IR for designation. Can you just kind of give us an update on him? Would that be a possibility going forward? Uh, you know, we'll see. It's still, uh, he's still working through some through, through the rehab process at this time. Having, having been through scenarios this, this season in which you've, the team has faced a run of points or a run of adversity on the field and at times responded and at times not responded, you, how do you prepare, do, do you feel your team is more prepared should that happen on Sunday when you're facing a Patriots team that could put up points and, 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 and how do you guard against you know, not panicking at those critical moments? Right. No, fair question. I mean, there's a lot of teams that have been in that situation against this, these, you know, the Patriots. And so you know, we just got to focus on, again, what we do, the mental toughness part of every game. There's moments in every game um, where, the, where the game hangs in the balance and, um, or things don't go your way. And that's part of also establishing our, like I said earlier, our mental toughness as a football team, um, as a building. And, I, and that's one of the parts that you know, I think you have to do is, hey, there's going to be moments in a game, there's going to be moments in a season where things ebb and flow. And, and how you handle those moments sometimes determines how far you go and, uh, and how, f how high you fly at the end of the day. So, um, you know, again, you come back to the team, the team uh, um, you know, focus and making sure we hang together as a team. And, and I think to this point we've done a good job of that. Belichick said today that he thinks your team plays with a lot of passion. Uh, what does that mean to you based on what you're trying to build here? I know you mentioned back in the spring that you want teams to feel a certain way when they play you. What does that mean to you that he says your team plays with a lot of passion? Uh, it's a, you know, I take it as a compliment. I appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, you know I, I think it's more of a compliment for the guys in the locker room and, that, and the coaches and the way they coach and what they're able to establish every week. You know, the guys go out and play hard and that – you know, when you when you go to sometimes we have um, you know clinics where you get together with other coaches, the combine, and and to me one of the greatest compliments um, uh, that another another coach can share uh, with me or another coach is that your players play hard because that doesn't always happen everywhere, and um, you know so I I'll take, we take that as a compliment. Um, you know that said, we have to continue to grow and, and get better. Sean, today's the first day you've really gone outside the realm of day to day with Cordy. There's some fear that you could lose him for the season. Now that there's no you know, I don't know, Joe. I'm not going to go there. Um, it's still up in the air at this point. Um, you know, I do think he's getting better, um, but you know, I'm just. Uh, it's really more so um, kind of status quo at the present time until we know more today and tomorrow. You wouldn't commit to Tyrod beyond this game after the last one. Does that mean if he plays poorly in a loss, you might consider going back to beat him? No, we look at everything every week. Um, I'm confident in Tyrod. You need, the question you asked me the other day, um, you know, talked about um, in the scheme of, in the context of Play playoffs, yeah, and that's why I answered it the way I did. Um, you know, I'm confident in Tyrod Taylor, and, and we all have to play better. We all have to coach better every week. And that, you know, if we play like we did last week, if I coach like I did last week, um, you know, we won't be good enough to win this week. So that's that's the growth mindset too, Jerry, is where we're trying to go. And that's all of us improving on a daily basis, weekly basis, as we build, as we develop uh, our foundation. And, and that's really the growth mindset that we embrace. John, it's, more, an old story, it's an old storyline, but um, Brady is the poster child, the all-time poster child for the randomness of the draft. Can you just, you know, discuss that process of how a guy like that could fall all the way down and it happens you know in other drafts but not to that extent the career he's put together yeah i mean i'm look i wasn't in their building so i don't know the process the, the processes they went through to to draft you know tom brady i mean obviously um there's only a few of those guys out there if maybe there's just one um but there's other stories of guys falling and becoming very good players excellent players and so um, you know, I think the hardest thing, um, and you can ask Brandon about this in the spring um, uh, for more detail, but the hardest thing from my standpoint really, Sal, is, is these players are so young when they come out of college, and, and there's a big-time projection um, for a lot of these guys. Um, so you try and gather as much data, as much information, and, you know, some of it is accurate, and some of it, unfortunately, isn't always accurate. So, um, you know, the great part about, to me, about what he's been able to do is you see the drive, you see the passion, uh, you see the heart, and the, just the commitment to, to excellence, which you know, I have a great amount of respect for.